The stunning image tells the story. A once majestic Falcon 9 booster, now scorched, melted, and tipped over, arrives at Port Canaveral like a battle-scarred veteran. Those iconic landing legs, now stuck awkwardly in the air, the rocket's body melted and hanging precariously off the drone ship. If not for the nine Merlin engines still intact at the base, you might not recognize this as SpaceX's workhorse rocket. While all eyes are on Starbase Texas for the highly anticipated Starship Flight 8, a serious situation is unfolding on the East Coast that could impact SpaceX's ambitious launch schedule. What initially appeared to be a routine Starlink mission with a perfect landing has now revealed itself as something far more concerning. The dramatic failure occurred Sunday night after a seemingly flawless touchdown on the Just Read the Instructions drone ship. The SpaceX live feed showed a successful landing at 9.30 p.m. before cutting away. But what happened next has engineers scrambling for answers. A fire erupted in the bottom section of the first stage, damaging a landing leg and causing the entire booster to tip over onto the drone ship 250 miles off Florida's coast. This rare and troubling incident marks the latest in a series of Falcon 9 issues that have plagued recent missions. From the August 2024 drone ship crash to payload losses and problematic deorbit burns. As SpaceX's Kiko Donev puts it, every failure is an opportunity to learn. Today on Elon Musk 24 Hours, we'll examine what went wrong, how this damaged booster could impact future missions, and what it means for the Falcon 9 program that's become essential to the entire space industry. Let's dive right in. Walking along Port Canaveral's edge Wednesday, onlookers couldn't believe their eyes. The drone ship, just read the instructions, had returned with its cargo, but what should have been a routine booster recovery had turned into something entirely different. Engineers in SpaceX uniforms moved with unusual urgency. Their expressions tense as they assess the damage to what had once been the company's pride. Booster B-1086. The landing legs are completely melted, whispered one spectator to another. Look at how it's just hanging there. This wasn't supposed to happen. SpaceX has perfected the art of landing and reusing its Falcon 9 first stages, with success rates approaching 99%. The company that revolutionized spaceflight economics by proving rockets don't need to be disposable was now facing an embarrassing and potentially costly setback. Behind the flames, what actually happened? Let's break down the sequence of events. Sunday night's Starlink mission began like countless others before it. At precisely 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, the Falcon 9 lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral carrying another batch of internet satellites to join SpaceX's massive constellation. Eight minutes and 15 seconds after launch, the first stage booster performed its choreographed dance of engine burns, grid fin adjustments, and precise navigation to touchdown on the floating platform. SpaceX's live webcast showed viewers what appeared to be another flawless landing before switching cameras to focus on the second stage's continued journey to orbit. But what happened next remained hidden from public view until the drone ship returned to port. According to SpaceX's official statement, following the successful landing, an off-nominal fire in the aft end of the rocket damaged one of the booster's landing legs, which resulted in it tipping over. The fire began near the engines, possibly from residual propellant or a component that failed to cool properly after the intense heat of re-entry and landing burns. With the drone ship stationed approximately 250 miles off Florida's coast, there was no immediate danger to the mainland. But for B-1086, the damage was catastrophic. The lost booster, B-1086's short career. This wasn't just any booster. B-1086 had a unique history that made its loss particularly noteworthy. Originally built as a Falcon Heavy side booster, it had participated in the June 2024 launch of the NOAA's geosynchronous weather satellite, GOU. Engineers later converted it to serve as a standard Falcon 9 first stage, a testament to the modularity of SpaceX's rocket design. In its new role, B-1086 successfully completed three more missions, two dedicated to launching Starlink satellites and another carrying a pair of Maxar's Worldview Legion Earth observation satellites. Sunday's mission marked only its fifth flight, well below the current record of 26 flights 
held by another Falcon 9 booster. Booster 1086 was unfortunately lost last night after a successful landing, wrote Kiko Donev, SpaceX's vice president of launch, in an internal memo that later became public. His words carried both disappointment and determination. Every failure is an opportunity to learn. This setback will not only improve the reliability of Falcon 9, but of all vehicles SpaceX builds. A troubling pattern, recent Falcon 9 issues. While SpaceX maintains one of the most reliable launch systems in the industry, a concerning pattern has emerged in recent months that's impossible to ignore. August 2024, another Falcon 9 booster crashed while attempting to land on a drone ship, temporarily halting the launch schedule. July 2024, a Falcon 9 upper stage malfunction resulted in the complete loss of a Starlink payload, causing a two-week pause in launches. September 2024, following the Crew-9 mission to the International Space Station, a Falcon 9 upper stage experienced problems with its deorbit burn, prompting another two-week launch pause except for one deep space mission. February 2024, a failed deorbit burn caused a Falcon 9 upper stage to re-enter Earth's atmosphere over Europe, with debris landing in western Poland. Remarkably, the FAA did not mandate a launch halt after this incident. And now this, a booster lost after what appeared to be a successful landing. These incidents raise important questions. Is SpaceX pushing its hardware too far? Has the pressure to maintain a breakneck launch cadence, sometimes exceeding one launch per week, created shortcuts in the inspection and refurbishment process? Or are these simply the expected growing pains of a company that's constantly pushing the boundaries of what's possible? Inside SpaceX's engineering response. At SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, the company's engineers are already dissecting what went wrong. They're reviewing telemetry data, examining high-resolution imagery from the drone ship, and comparing notes with previous anomalies. Bill Gerstenmeier, SpaceX's Vice President for Build and Flight Reliability, had coincidentally addressed quality concerns during a NASA briefing on February 26, just days before this incident. He revealed the company had been investigating a manufacturing defect in a Merlin engine nozzle used in the Falcon 9 upper stage. We saw potentially a manufacturing defect that could have showed up in the nozzle, he explained, referring to an upper stage being produced at the company's factory. That kind of makes us question all the nozzles and make sure they're cleared. According to Gerstenmeier, that particular issue turned out to be isolated to one nozzle in the factory, confirmed through checks of paperwork tracking the manufacturing and testing process. But his broader philosophy remains relevant to this new failure. Whenever we discover something here that looks a little strange, we'll pause a little bit, take a look, dig into the data, and make sure we really have solid flight rationale. The FAA investigation begins Wednesday afternoon. The Federal Aviation Administration weighed in, confirming it was aware of the anomaly during the Starlink mission and declaring it an official mishap. The event involved the loss of the Falcon 9 first stage booster following a successful drone ship landing at sea. The FAA stated, SpaceX is required to perform a mishap investigation and submit the final report to the FAA. Despite this official designation, the FAA has allowed SpaceX to continue operations, a sign that regulators don't view this incident as symptomatic of a more serious systemic issue, for now. Meanwhile, NASA has been closely monitoring these developments. The agency has already delayed the launch of its SphereX astronomy spacecraft and four-punch space science satellites, originally scheduled for February 27, to no earlier than March 4th. NASA cited the need for additional time to evaluate launch vehicle hardware data as the reason for the delays. A pre-launch briefing scheduled for March 3rd was canceled at the last minute, with NASA stating only that, the agency will share more information as soon as possible. As of early afternoon March 3rd, NASA had not provided additional updates or confirmed whether the March 4th launch would proceed as planned. The show must go on. Starship Flight 8, Amidst these challenges on the East Coast, SpaceX's revolutionary Starship program continues to forge ahead in Texas. The company has announced that Starship Flight 8 is set for Thursday, March 6, 2025, 
with the launch window opening at 5.30 p.m. Central Time. This eighth flight test follows SpaceX's thorough investigation into the loss of the Starship upper stage during Flight 7 and demonstrates the company's commitment to developing the world's most ambitious reusable rocket system. For Flight 8, Starship will undertake a suborbital journey carrying its first actual payload, four Starlink satellite simulators designed to burn up upon re-entry. This marks a significant evolution in testing as SpaceX begins to validate the vehicle's cargo deployment capabilities. The flight plan includes several critical tests, a single Raptor engine relight and space re-entry experiments to gather data for the upper stage's eventual return to the Texas launch site, a boost back burn by the Super Heavy booster, an attempted catch by the launch tower's mechanical arms, affectionately known as chopsticks. If health checks raise any concerns or if the flight director denies final approval, the booster will follow a backup plan, targeting a gentle splashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. Engineering Evolution, Starship's latest upgrades. SpaceX has incorporated numerous upgrades for Flight 8, reflecting lessons learned from previous tests. The Starship upper stage now features redesigned forward flaps to better withstand re-entry heat while simplifying their mechanics a 25% increase in propellant capacity for extended mission capabilities, deliberate removal of heat shield tiles from key areas to stress test vulnerable spots, a re-entry profile engineered to challenge the structural integrity of the upper stage's rear flaps. Meanwhile, the Super Heavy Booster has received cutting edge avionics, a more robust flight computer, improved power and network systems, integrated smart batteries, these enhancements boost reliability and performance as SpaceX moves closer to its ultimate goal of fully reusable spaceflight. Firefly Aerospace, rising from the lunar surface. While SpaceX works through its Falcon 9 challenges, competitor Firefly Aerospace continues its remarkable ascent in the space industry. Fresh off the successful touchdown of its Blue Ghost lunar lander, Firefly has secured a new NASA contract. The agency announced on March 4th that it had selected Firefly to launch a trio of Earth Science SmallSats that will study storm formation. The contract, awarded through NASA's Venture Class Acquisition of Dedicated and Rideshare VADR program, will see Firefly's Alpha rocket launch the three-satellite investigation of convective updrafts INCAS mission from Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia as soon as 2026. Each INCAS satellite weighs approximately 100 kilograms and will be equipped with K-band radars to study cloud convection patterns. The satellites will fly in formation, the second trailing 30 seconds behind the first and the third 90 seconds behind the second to help scientists measure vertical transport within storms. We strategically built our one metric ton Alpha rocket to support dedicated missions like INCAS, said Jason Kim. Chief Executive of Firefly Aerospace. This allows our customers to place their satellites in the exact orbit they need. Kim revealed during a March 2nd interview, after the successful landing of the company's Blue Ghost 1 lunar lander, that Firefly is accelerating its launch cadence. We're going to launch more than once a quarter this year, he projected, moving into double-digit launches of Alpha next year. The bigger picture, Risks versus rewards in modern spaceflight. The juxtaposition of SpaceX's Falcon 9 challenges and Firefly successes highlights a fundamental truth about the modern space industry. Progress comes with risk, and even the most reliable systems can fail. SpaceX has transformed access to space by driving down costs through reusability and maintaining an aggressive launch cadence. In 2024 alone, the company is on track to launch over 100 missions more than any other organization on the planet. But this relentless pace puts enormous pressure on hardware, personnel, and procedures. When combined with a corporate culture that embraces rapid iteration and learning from failure, occasional setbacks become almost inevitable. The question facing SpaceX, and by extension, the entire industry, is where to draw the line between acceptable risk and reckless haste. Finding that balance will determine whether companies like SpaceX can maintain the public and regulatory trust needed to continue pushing the boundaries of what's possible in space. As we've seen today, even the most reliable systems in spaceflight can experience unexpected failures. 
The damaged Falcon 9 booster at Port Canaveral serves as a powerful reminder that the path to revolutionizing space access is never without challenges. What makes SpaceX exceptional isn't that they never fail, it's how they respond when they do. Each setback becomes data, each problem transforms into an engineering solution. As Elon Musk often says, if things aren't failing, you're not innovating enough. While this incident may temporarily impact SpaceX's ambitious launch schedule, it won't derail the company's broader vision. Even as teams work to understand what happened to B-1086, Starship Flight 8 prepares to push boundaries in Texas, and Firefly Aerospace continues its impressive rise as a serious industry competitor. The coming weeks will reveal whether this Falcon 9 anomaly represents an isolated incident or signals deeper issues that require more substantial changes. Either way, we'll be here covering every development as it unfolds. If you found this analysis valuable, hit that like button and share it with fellow space enthusiasts. What do you think happened to cause the fire after landing? Drop your theories in the comments below. And to stay updated on all SpaceX developments, Starship tests, and the rapidly evolving commercial space race, subscribe to Elon Musk 24 hours and hit that notification bell. Until next time, this is Elon Musk 24 hours, where we track humanity's journey to the stars, one launch at a time.